So is Hegel still the king of integrity amplifiers? You guys know I love Hegel amplifiers. Uh, it never sounded as good as with the Hegels. Really like the Hegel H120. The first thing I noticed was that the Hegel H120 had uh, a larger sound stage. Yeah, I loved Hegel amplifiers and I still do. In fact, I put money where my mouth is. I was an active user of Hegel. I still use Hegel. At one point, I was crazy enough to have the Hegel H190 downstairs and upstairs for my you know, near field and my stereo system. Yeah, he's crazy. And yeah, there's a good reason why I love Hegel amplifiers. They're a great match with a variety of different speakers that's hard to drive, like the Magnapan, Kef, um, and it's a great match with one of my favorite speakers of all time, the Sonos Fabric Electra Motor. So that's why I love it. Now, is it still good today though? Because it's been a while since we covered Hegel and since I heard Hegel once more uh, compared to all the other stuff that we've been reviewing and hearing. But even then, Hegel made us such a big impression on Tujin that he chose the Hegel and he bought the Hegel recently uh, even though he has so many choices to choose from, especially coming here all the time and listening to you know great stuff. Yeah. So I want to hear his opinion and you know let you guys hear his opinion on uh, why he chose Hegel versus every other choice that he has. So let's give that to him. Okay, take it away. Okay, three reasons why I chose the Hegel H120. For number one, it's sound. And what I mean by that is when we compared the NAD M10 and the Hegel H120 with those R3 speakers, it was no contest. The Hegel just sounded way more detailed, a lot more spacious, and I own KEF speakers. I specifically own the KEF R11s in the R400 uh, subwoofer and R100 bookshelves. And in a near field desktop, uh, desktop setting, that's where I use my Hegel H120. Kind of overkill, but the sound that I get is just fantastic. Now let's go to number two. Number two is the ease of use or the intuitiveness of this unit. Uh, one thing that I really like about this unit is the remote. Super easy to use. And you know, why am I talking about a remote? But no matter where I use this remote in my room, whether it's pointed at the actual unit itself, the Hegel H120, or just away, like if I'm holding it like this, um, I can adjust the volume, the inputs, and the settings very easily. And then number three, this is the cheapest Hegel that has balanced inputs. And that's a huge thing for me because when I use an external DAC, um, I may be using long runs of cables and having balance just means better compatibility with other devices that I use. And I just feel comfortable having balanced inputs. It just future proofs me. And that's just something that I look for in an amp. Um, and that's kind of why I chose the H120. So we just heard them again, mm -hmm. well heard the Hegel H120 again, and after hearing, for me, um, the Electa Amator 3 mm -hmm. with the Hegel integrated amplifiers is absolutely phenomenal. I first fell in love with the Hegel um, H190 so much because of this pairing with the Electa Amator. And totally, you've heard it, you were surprised as well, right? Yeah, the synergy was insane. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible tonality, and you got you guys know what I you know what I value in a speaker is tonality. In any sound system, it has to sound right, and this is above and beyond right. Like in my opinion, this sounds better than real. <laughs> like let, let me put this in perspective. I was off axis sitting beside Jay, and Jay was just listening to his his test tracks with the Hegel H120 and the Electro Amateur. And you were just going at it. You did not want to stop. You no. were you were saying that you were genuinely enjoying yourself and you wanted to keep this system. I do. Um, and that's really, you know, I'm probably going to make a video about this uh, again, but I'm always looking for that end game system, right? And yeah. People talk about this all the time. And for me, end game is not necessarily a end game. Um, I think this is something, you know, I'm still young, you're still young, and, you know, it's not going to be something that I'm going to stop because I found the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. Even the Electama th Tour with the Halo right now, as much as, you know, it is great and I can probably not find a flaw with it, right now, um, 
I may find something better or if, when I do find something better, I may find a flaw with this system now. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. You think it's great until you hear something better and then you find the other thing grainy or less detailed and so on. So that's how it, all, it always works. But to this day, I can confidently say that it is one of the best speaker and the best matchup that I've reviewed on this channel in this room. Well, yet to review because you still haven't reviewed these. Oh yeah, I still haven't reviewed that Camel Tours. But and I'm talking about in combination mm -hmm. those the Hego H120 with the Electamator. Yeah. Um, the Hego H190 with the Electamator was better. Um, base. It was yeah, it was better when I listened to it when I used to work at the back back in the high end retail store. Yeah. But I have to say that <laughs> I haven't heard it in this room. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's hard for me to kind of um a b it. Mm -hmm. But with the Hego H120 in this room, sounded better than the Hego H90 with those speakers in the uh, store. Mm -hmm. Because the store is not acoustically treated, you know, it's not a dedicated room like this. Yeah. Um, so that's all, that's all I have to say. I was genuinely amazed. And to answer the question, do I still think Hego integrated amplifiers are the king of integrated amplifiers? Absolutely. I think so. Because not only, I've said this before, but not only is it affordable and now I'm gonna get a lot of hate comments mm. because this is a three thousand dollar integrated amplifier. The Hego H120 is three thousand dollars. But divide that up by four. Right? Streamer, DAC, um, preamplifier, amplifier. Okay. That's what that's how I cope. Mm -hmm. It's a coping mechanism. Oh, oh and that awesome remote. I put value on that remote. Yeah, but you know if you divide it into different components, right? That's how I cope. That's four divided by four, right? Mm -hmm. You're paying Something like, what is it? I'm bad at math. 600, 700? Uh, 750. 750. I trust you. Asian math. 750 per uh, component. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to get a DAC that sounds as good as the one in the Higo H120 for 750? Mm -hmm. Right? How are you going to get a system that has such a great matching and synergy as the one all built inside this one chassis unit that's compact? Mm -hmm. For 750. Where are you gonna get an amplifier for 750? I think what really kind of solidified my purchase with the H120, well, yes, it sounded great on my system, but then, you know, I heard off these speakers, and these are like, what, $10,000? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I, I don't have really have to worry about the amp department because what I just heard just now was like, whoa, that was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so. 75 watts per channel. Yeah. Really high damping factor, but 75 watts per channel. But does it sound like a 75 water? No. No. It sounds like a 200 water, in my opinion. Um, no problem driving it. No clips. No, no, no strain. No artifacts or anything. No strain for power. No limitation in the headroom that I feel for 75 watts. Feels more like a headroom I have of a, with 200 watts. Mm -hmm. um, and again, for $3,000. 750 if your math is correct. Yep. 750 per component. Where are you going to get that? And then there's also the fact that you were using a different amplifier with these, right? Yeah. The NADC. So I was using the NADC298 amplifier with the um, Electamotors. And that's a lot of power too. Prior right? to this. Yeah. But um, I didn't feel like I got less power switching to the Hegel. Mm -hmm. And actually prefer, I told you right off the bat. Yeah. Um, the first thing I said after sitting down and listening to it to him, I said, this you don't get this with the NADC298. Yeah. That's that. what I said. You did. With word. So yeah, I'm am I I'm am I impressed after all these years or months? Uh, years, it's right? It's been years. It's been years. Uh, time flies by. <laughs> yeah. But am I impressed still? I am more than impressed. Like revisiting Hegel, now I want to buy Hegel once more. <laughs> You're crazy, but I see it. I understand why. And the reason I sold it was because I have all these gear, as you know, yeah. and I don't, I didn't have the luxury to just keep everything, keep everything, and keep Hego especially because it's like I said, it, it's a, it's an all in one. It's a mm -hmm. streamer DAC, you know, so many functions. Mm -hmm. What if a streamer comes in? Now I have to remove Hego, yeah, <laughs> and so so on. So I had to um, kind of, um, you know, that's the curse of a reviewer life, right? Mm -hmm. But if I have a choice to have one integrated amplifier today, um, that I will be satisfied with, it will be the Hegel. That's great praise. It is, and, and I, I stand by it. I stand, <laughs> stand by what I said about Hegel way back. And, and so, 
There you so, have it. It really is the king of integrated here. It is. So that's the final. Um, 2021, still to this day, Verdict. I think that the Hegel, is, Hegel in general is still the king of integrated amplifiers and is my preference and still my recommendation. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.